For this next group of problems, we're going to find the domain for radicals. Now a square root graph starts at x equals 0 because the square root of 0 is 0. And then if we go to x equals 1, the square root of 1 is 1. If we plug in 4, that's a perfect square. We get 2. So it increases up to the right forever. What happens if I plug in negative 1? Well, the square root of negative 1 is undefined. The reason for that is because the definition of a square root is we're finding some number that when you multiply it by itself twice, it gives you that result. For instance, 1 times 1 equals 1. So the square root of 1 is 1. 2 times 2 equals 4, or the square root of 4 is 2. But there is no possible way to get two of the same number that multiplies to make a negative 1. So square roots of negatives are undefined. When we have a square root, the inside expression must be positive. So we always set the inside expression of a square root greater than or equal to 0 because on a number line that is the positive direction. So if f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4 and I want to find the domain of the function, I'm going to take x plus 4 and set it greater than or equal to 0 so that it is positive. Now I want to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 4 and I get x is greater than or equal to 0 minus 4 which is negative 4. So this says I can plug in any number starting with negative 4 and going greater than. To get the interval it helps to see this on a number line. We're starting at negative 4 and going greater than so we have one interval from negative 4 to infinity. And we do brackets on negative 4 because it is closed in and included in the domain and infinity has parentheses. Our next function g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 3 and the minus 3 is not inside of the radical. Well this minus 3 doesn't affect the domain that actually just moves the graph either up or down but it doesn't affect the sideways movement at all. So we just need to focus on the radical part and we want to set x greater or equal to 0. And that would be the domain. x must be greater or equal to 0. So on a number line, the graph starts at 0, goes forever to the right, giving us the interval brackets 0, comma, infinity with parentheses. Next we have f of x equals square root of 3 minus 4x. So 3 minus 4x must be greater than or equal to 0. If I subtract 3, I get negative 4x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then I would divide both sides by negative 4. Now here's where you have to remember that when you divide or multiply by negatives, that's going to flip the direction of your inequality around. So now I have x is less than or equal to positive 3 fourths. So on the number line, at positive 3 fourths it's equal to it but it's going less than so that means it's approaching negative infinity. So the interval is negative infinity comma 3 fourths parentheses on negative infinity and brackets on 3 fourths. For our final example we have g of x is equal to the square root of negative x minus 8. Again, that minus 8 on the outside is a vertical movement, and so it doesn't affect the domain at all. So we just focus on the radical, and we set negative x greater or equal to 0. Now the coefficient of negative x is negative 1. So I'm going to divide by negative 1, and I'm going to flip the direction of the inequality, and 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. So I get x is less than or equal to 0. So the interval is negative infinity comma 0. We have parentheses on the infinity and brackets on 0.